Hello everybody and welcome back to the 200th YCS here in Utrecht. I'm here with Matt Bell still. Good day Luke. And uh, yeah, we're here in the last round of Swiss. Final round of Swiss and then we're going to be going to cutting to the top 64 when we get our fans on and throw half, the, well more than half the players out of the tournament. Yes, yeah. And we figure out who's going to be the first champion of the anniversary YCS. Yeah, absolutely. Um, wh what have we got these, uh, these two decks? This is Burning Abyss versus Mech Knight Invoked. Interesting. So it's going to be the first time we see Burning Abyss up here on stage. No, uh, I think it's, no we've had it before to, this weekend. Oh, did we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I forget. So long ago. It was, yeah, it felt feels like an eternity ago that we started. It was back in like round two or something, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I can't, it was yeah, a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Anyway, so um, we took a bit of time getting ready for this match. So we're not going to keep on going for too much longer. So we're going to head straight over to Oliver German and Tom Payne to do the play-by-play. -play. Yeah, where 2,356 uh, players started, only 100 and something are remaining. At least those are the ones that have a shot. Advancing to the top 64 and then it's a few more rounds after that. Six more rounds, in fact, to uh, claim a new trophy, brand new trophy. Um, Big trophy. Yeah, I heard quite a few guys that said, I'm, I'm only here for that trophy, actually. It's a bold it's claim. It is, it is. But um, you have the brand new prize card enshrined in that trophy. Looks really nice. That is pretty, um, pretty we're going to show you that in the Facebook Live after this round when the top card is going to be performed. I think that's when we're going to be live. All right. We got two players with super creative decks, or at least not the ordinary stuff that you expect at this event. And both uh, of these, yeah, perhaps a bit older, a bit older exactly, but like not not what you would have expected going into this tournament. And we have Burning Abyss on the one hand side, and then Mech Knights on the other. Ah, uh, yeah, Trickstar Mech Knights. So Trickstar Mech Knights. Just for those of you who are wondering about the deck breakdown, we chose to group. Uh, sort of Trickstar was decided to be the main engine. And so we called it a Trickstar deck right. for the main deck breakdown. We didn't so have Trickstar and Trickstar Mech Knight. Because we didn't want to like have a different category for Trickstar, Trickstar Mech Knight, and then Invoked, Invoked Mech Knight, Invoked Sky Striker, Sky Striker Invoked, blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> so we had to pick the main sort of deck type. And that for this is Trickstar. And if we maybe we can quickly bring up the deck breakdown. This is just going into this round. This is what the br deck breakdown looks like. As you can see, 10 guys, uh, Sky Striker, Trickster, and 20 guys with Trickster, Mech Knight. Or Trickster Pure, That's it, if yeah. anybody's playing that. And Goki continues to climb the it ranks. Climbing, yeah. Now on third place. So there, there might be a situation where Goki is even overtaking Sky Striker Pure, but. Well, it's, it's still got 70, 80. Yeah. Places to catch. A few more guys in Sky Striker Pure. All right, so this is the metagame breakdown going into this round. You heard a tiny little bit about the decks of these guys. We got Uros Pavlovic from France and Philipp Wolstoff from Germany. They are ready to kick things off for the last round of Swiss. So here we go with our last feature match in the Swiss rounds. Yeah, so now they just got the signal, they can start yeah. up. So we've used the dice now to indicate that Philip is going first with uh, his Trickstar deck. How important is that? Do, does he want to go first? I don't think so, actually. If I was going to guess, I would say that uh, Uros made him go first, because normally people with the Mech Knight cards in their deck would choose to go second. Yeah, and both of these guys, pretty like they need to have good tiebreakers to still advance to the top cut. It's going to be a close one, um, but still still they have a chance. So this is still a very good looking hand for Philip though. He's got the pot of, he's got all the search cards to get his engine going and he's got a pot of desires to draw after Even searching. Even more cards, yeah. yeah. So there's always pot of desires is one of the more interesting decision making cards. So if it's a card like Upstart Goblin, you probably just play it before, mm -hmm. because then if you have a choice of what to search, so if you have a choice of what to search, you play the upstart, you play the draw card first, because that way you can then choose what to search after you draw. But if you've only got one target for your search, you then you do the search sure first, yeah. because you don't want to draw the card that you were going to search. Yeah. But with Pot of Desires, all of that's thrown out the window, because you banish 10 cards as well. So there's a good 
chance that you might banish an important card that you wanted to search, so you probably do all your searching first. And actually, Trickster has a couple of cards that you really don't want to banish. You don't, but unfortunately, the, the key one that you only tend to run one copy of is the Lily Bell. Mm -hmm. And the Lily Bell you're not going to search on your first turn anyway, because it has an effect that activates when it's searched, which is the special summoning. And you're not going to want to use that on your first turn, because you don't really have that much of a use for it. So, Philip, interestingly enough, first checking the two cards he drew, and then taking a quick look, or maybe not, at the banished cards. Yeah, if you want to be, you know, fully broke, this sort of mind game where you just don't check your banished cards at all. So, he's <laughs> almost out of trickster monsters now. With, uh, no, with I think there was one Candina and two Ash I saw, but I couldn't see Yeah, but uh, he's also got one on the field, another one in hand. Well, it's all right if they're all in your hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, out <laughs> of, uh, in the sense that there are no more remaining in his deck. Uh, there's probably a couple of Licorice. Oh, okay. no, there's two Licorice in hand. I didn't see the Lily Bell, but that that's not a guarantee. That it was not fair. Pretty explosive start here. Uh, so double licorice is a card that does a lot of burn damage if your opponent needs to search their deck, but Burning Abyss doesn't really do that much searching. Right, it used to. Uh, a bit. A bit. One scum in the end phase. Dante adding back. Yeah. But there's not like compare it to something like Sky Striker. Or spell books. <laughs> yeah, spell books, or even the, back the, in the Sky days. Striker Trickstar deck, which had about. You know, 10 different cards, all of which would cause you to take some damage. So here we see a Fiendish Rhino Warrior. Fiendish Rhino Warrior. And yeah. Gallus the Star Beast is one of my favorite cards. I used to love playing these, like, Monster Mash decks where you run... And now they're even better because you have Light of Secker, so you get this, like, bonus absolutely nuts. Yeah. Light of Secker, which is a pot of greed with a bonus effect in the graveyard. He's also playing a Black Luster Soldier. Oh, yeah, Black Luster Soldier. This is a... Uh, Typical Burning Abyss. Well, it's one of the ways of building Burning Abyss is to run Gallus along with Rescue Cat. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of different little engines you can run. Some people have chosen to run Destiny Hero Malicious and another level 6 Fabled Sulkius uh, you can run. There are loads of different tech cards you can run in Burning Abyss. You could just run lots of hand traps and Burning Abyss cards. You could run... Oh, that's uh, a good mill. That is a good mill. <laughs> he's, he's chosen... I, I'm interested... Uh, why he detached the Rhino Warrior and didn't use the effect of the first Rhino Warrior that he sent to the graveyard with Gallus instead. I mean, maybe he wanted to see what he milled first and figured that the Rhino Warrior was going to end up in the graveyard anyway. Mm. So Calcab there targets a face-down spell or trap and returns it to the hand, so he's chosen rather than have it go back to his hand just to, just to chain it. You would agree, right? Yeah, it seems reasonable. Yeah. I mean, if you, if, you, if you don't chain it, then you're not going to be able to play it until next turn. Yeah, and therefore very... A uh, quick moment, you also saw Farfa. You guys have been asking for Farfa in the feature match, finally got it. This is exactly what you were asking for, I think. I'm sure it was. Yeah. Right, so new cards loading up. Uros now with a Rescue Cat, of all cards. Of all cards. Uh, rescue Cat not going to see play at least this turn, because he's already used his normal mm -hmm. And I... I don't know about the other cards, they're going to load in very soon. Okay. Uh -huh. So now, so this is now still in the same chain that came up after the Dante mill. So it was going to be, uh, I'm guessing, what's the name of the card? Calcab was chain link two. Rhino was chain link one, and the reincarnation was chain link three. And now the Rhino chain link one sent Graf, and now Graf is summoned Seer. Which will allow him to make that, a... That actually caused something from the crowd. The crowd was like, oh! Whoa. Yeah, so now it's time. We're probably going to see uh, a Beatrice hit the board. It's very interesting. The different iterations that Burning Abyss went through uh, over the years. Infinite iterations. Infinite iterations, yeah. Some would go as far as saying that. Um, and it, it has been pronounced that a couple of times. Just every time it drags itself out of the grave again. It just never goes away, yeah. I mean, if, if you've uh, traveled through the seven stages of hell, of course, you're going to be able to be come back resilient. from the graveyard. I mean, yeah. They do keep getting new cards every so often, to be fair. And He's like, Beatrice is a pretty good card. It's hard to argue. It is hard to argue with that. So we're going to see Underclock Taker reduce the effect of Lycoris, so Underclock Taker an attack over it. Right. Oh, no. Farf has banished the Lycoris. Underclock Taker has reduced the attack of the other Lycoris and attacked over it, and now Beatrice attacked her. Alright, so it's a pretty good position that Uros put himself in here. 
Well, I don't know what he's expecting that he's playing against here because if he if he's expecting the Mech Knight deck, mm -hmm. then he's probably I don't, I don't think he's expecting the Mech Knight deck because now he's left himself with so when you play against Trickstar, you don't necessarily know what other cards they've got in their deck. Yeah, um, and. You know, you see a bunch of cards. Trickstar traditionally don't really have good ways of leveraging. Just just with Trickstar cards, you don't really have good ways of outing your opponent's board. Uh, you don't really have good ways of converting all of your Trickstar cards into useful stuff. Right. They just sit there. They're very good at attacking directly, Yeah. as a lot of cards are. A lot of um, cards are, yeah. But the Mech Knights are a very good way of making some sort of more explosive plays, maybe. And... They, they care about the, the columns. Indeed, they care about the columns as well. So we can see the Beatrice directly underneath the underclock taker, which is not a situation you want to be in. It's not ideal. It is not ideal. To, to borrow one of uh, Matt Bell's favorite coverage terms. Yeah, so the there's a free zone there, and there's a purple nightfall. So the purple nightfall will turn itself into uh, the other colored one. <laughs> We've uh, got Indigo Eclipse and Purple Nightfall in the hand at the moment. What's the name of the other? I should know this. I can't remember. There's going to be one that's going to get him like two searches, which is pretty good. So first of all, that search is another one. Blue Sky. Blue Sky. That's the card. Yeah. Sorry, it just took me a second. But it's, uh, So Ogre is an exceptionally good answer to the Purple Nightfall. But he has a Blue Sky in his hand. Yeah. That's not what you want to see. Now he gets two searches. In fact, you have to take two searches. It's not up to. It's, it has to be two cards with well, different names. I'm, I'm sure he doesn't mind. He doesn't mind, no. But sometimes it, you don't have enough, enough different named because you need two different names and they can't actually be Blue Sky themselves. So sometimes you don't have enough targets. So we can see that Uros has got one more interruption in the form of Beatrice, and he can send either a Farfa or probably Fairy Tale Snow from his deck to the graveyard. I'm assuming he's running Fairy Tale Snow. Lots of people like to run Fairy Tale Snow. Yeah, that looks like Fairy Tale Snow. Yeah, I was about to say. But it is in French. It's a tiny bit harder to read this deck list because everything is in French. Where's Snow? Uh, this one? Guide to Infers? No, no, the one, guide? no, the one beneath it. I'm guessing that's a fairy tale snow. Mm. It's got fairy blanche. Blanche, but blanche is white, isn't it? Yeah, like I, I like white be snow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, remember the fairy tale snow is a, is a is a pun. So maybe when it got translated I remember, into yeah. French. Yeah, it was a lot of fun translating that card. We'll look that up. So we do see the fairy tale snow being sent to the graveyard. Yeah, I, I see some blanche. <laughs> Animal ferique blanche. Is the French name, and I'm I'm pretty certain that I got that wrong, and I'm proud of that. That's nice. Yeah, you need, sometimes you need to be faking security here, so it's part of the job. Okay, so uh, Philip Wolstow uh, back with a couple of cards in his hand, which is interesting because it just looked like Uros Pavlovich was uh, claiming control over the field. So yes, yeah, so we've got Phillips now got the option. So he's got that Gozen match in his hand, which he might want to make heavy use of. But the problem with that, well, the problem with trying to make use of it is that you then most of your link monsters aren't light, and the rest of the cards in your deck are light. Yeah. So you have to decide really whether you want to make some link plays or use the Gozen match. And he's going to try and do both. But he's using it as like a backup strategy, basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe he's just going to happily get rid of his Nightmare Unicorn. Uh, it's very, very difficult to OTK your opponent if they have a copy of Fairy Tail Snow in their graveyard because right. it can come back at any point during the turn. And the, I don't think he's allowed to special summon that Purple Nightfall. Maybe we should confirm that with the judge. I think it but might be too late to decide late. that. That is... I mean, he, he did have just another Mech Knight in his hand that he could have summoned anyway. But um, I'm not sure why you're Quite conceded. explosive comeback from Philip Wolstorff. It saw a bit of an opening, immediately went for it. That trap card was really important just because he had two cards in the same column in the end. Yeah, but I mean, it could have been literally any spell or trap. You, you need to stop doing that. You, do, you don't need to badmouth the trap card after I gave it credit. You, you need to say, yeah, it's a really good card. It came it at the was, right it moment. It was an amazing card. Exactly. It could be set in the spell and trap card zone. It, didn't, it could have been an artifact monster. Yeah. 
That would have done the same thing. Would have that been better? Well, no. Or you get style points for that. Maybe. Mm. You get real style points if you go for one of the like OG monsters that you can set in your Spell and Trap card zone, like what? Silver Sentinel or Sp Toy Magician. Speaking of OG monsters and cards, even though the, they cannot be uh, set in your Spell and Trap card zone, I see D.D. Crow in the side deck of Crow is Pablo. OG. It's a that card is I heard about a bit, actually. Yeah. And um, is one of the cards that is going to come in here? I don't really think so, right? We see Majesty's Fiend, D.D. Crow, Spell Cancer. My guess is that Vanity's Fiend will find its way mm -hmm. into the deck because it shuts off all the Mech Knights. And honestly, if I'm looking at... Philip's, Philip's side deck, deck? Well, Philip's main deck, the only answer to a Vanity's Fiend, I think, is the Infinite Impermanence, in which there are two copies and possibly a third coming in, mm -hmm. expecting the Vanity's Fiend. That's definitely something you expect Burning Abyss yeah. to have in their side deck. Um, He's also got an evenly matched Gamma Seal. Ghost Gamma Ogus Seal might come in even though it doesn't answer the... Vanity's Fiend is an excellent answer to Beatrice. Mm -hmm. And in the Mech Knight deck, it's excellent because you can then choose which column it goes in. So when we saw how much advantage it gave him being able to search two Mech Knights for free with yeah. the Mech Knight Silver something or other, um, so you can then make that situation happen. If your opponent has a Link Monster, you can then make the, uh, you can then put the Gamma Seal there for them, give them the present, and take advantage of it. So yeah, my guess would be that we'll see the Gamma Seals coming in for Philip, and the Vanity's Fiend, and possibly the Majesty's Fiend coming in for Uros. It's quite interesting that we saw. Um Philip starting with the trickster, burning a tiny little bit. Not much. Um, not any. Did he burn? Uh, yeah, yeah, he burned because he activated the trickster ring. Okay, yeah. That did a fair amount of damage. So, basically setting up a kill in that sense. Burning Abyss takes control of the match and then suddenly he's like, okay, I also got some mech knights here and they're just going to run over you. Yeah, the mech knights, I'm guessing he wasn't expecting the mech knights. So, if we look at his extra deck, he, uh, if we look at Uros's extra deck, he may have had something which had diagonal arrows instead. And then he wouldn't have had two monsters in the same column for Philip to take advantage of. So we do, in fact, see the Vanity's Fiend in Uros' hand, as well as a Gallus. I think I saw a graph. So here's the hand of Uros, which is one card missing for whatever reason. Matches it's a Gallus. Vanity's Fiend <laughs> did draw into his side deck. I love Gallus. Gallus is great. Especially when it mills a fiendish rhino warrior. <laughs> this is how you do it, kids. He's done that twice now. It's his special trick. Did he do it twice? Yeah. He did it in the last game. But not with that card. No, no. Gallus milled fiendish rhino warrior. Oh, did it? It just gets you a free, like, foolish burial. And foolish burial is pretty good. I was taking notes for our... Uh, after event coverage, basically, so we can wrap up what happened in the feature matches. He'd already summoned a Fiendish Rhino Warrior, so it wasn't really that helpful because you can only use one of them in a turn. But this time, he's not got another Fiendish Rhino Warrior, so milling that one is just going to add a free, probably a tour guide from his deck to his hand. So looking at Philip's hand, he's got two copies of Gamma Seal. Uh, tricks the light stage. Two copies of Gamma Seal. There you go. You see my fortune telling that the Gamma Seal was coming in. Was correct, yeah. Was correct. And woo, there we go. But unfortunately, while Gamma Seal is one of the best cards at answering any monster your opponent can throw at you, it does not answer the Bounty Fiend because it cannot be special summoned. <laughs> I think there is a little bit of a mistake with the inputs because the input is claiming that there is a Link monster in Philip's hand. It does say there's a Trickstar Holy Angel in his hand. No. And that is a Link monster. Yeah. Actually, you can see it with the blue little symbol before Indeed. it. Um, what is that? Is what is that? It might be a Trickstar... Lilibel. Uh, Candina? It, it could be any of the, any, any, any of the Trickstar Any monsters, other Trickstar. Okay, it's got, we're going to see the correct card in just a second. Or we see a game loss. <laughs> Let's hope it's a different card instead. Oof, but the, that's really harsh. Like You, you got the Gamma Seal. You, you're feeling quite good about this. You're like, okay, I drew into some of my side deck tech. And then the opponent is like, yeah. Here's a Vanity's Fiend. Deal as, with that. As far as I can tell, the only answer that Philip has to this is the Infinite Impermanence. There's, uh, there's no destruction as deck. in uh, Dark Hole or something like that. These cards are no, not good enough anymore for they this aren't, format. They are not really. 
Yeah, they only destroy everything. Uh, who, who wants that? Evenly matched is a good card for answering cards, but it doesn't answer. Yeah. If there's only one if, threat... Exactly, if there's one card that's really annoying you... It's not very good at dealing with one threat. Oof. So, so how is Philip, he going to get rid of this? Uh, I think he's going to hope that he draws infinite impermanence. And he's just going to try and hang in there for long enough. Yep. Uh, so that I think that Lily Bell was the uh, Holy Angel. Right. That makes sense. It's also the card that, according to our app, just ended up in the graveyard. So, Did we see what the spell and trap drawn for Uros was? Um, no. Twin Twisters. Uh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, it's now on the field. Yeah, of course. That's interesting. I mean, perhaps he was afraid of Gozen Match? Because... He, in order to sign <laughs> no, in, Philip is just oh like, yeah, okay, let's, the goes and let's call it a day. I'm, I'm good with this. This is Maybe not he didn't want his opponent to see the goes and match. Okay, yeah, that could also be I mean, true. He but wasn't in danger of dying next turn. Yeah, but uh, so he, he wanted to not give away the secret deck, is what you're saying? Maybe. I don't I mean, he sided Twin Twister, right? So in order to side in Twin Twister, he's had to side out Light of Secker. Mm. And Light of Secker is a pot of greed. It's a very good card. So you have to really want to side in the Twin Twister to side out the Light of Secker. So he, I think he knows that he's. He, I think he's expecting to see a Gozen match or something that he really, really wants a twin twister. So it's not like Philip gave up a lot of information in. If we are going down I that think, route, I don't think he would have been in any way surprised to yeah. see a Gozen match there. As we see, mind otherwise crush, you're just not going to side in twin. Mind, oh, mind crush, crush is going great against Phillips. Burning Abyss, yeah. But you're not just going to blindly call a Vanshee's uh, Fiend, are you? No. So the Burning Abyss monsters, when you activate their yeah, effect yeah, from the hand, you yeah. have to reveal them. So then you can chain Mind Crush. So Mind Crush is never more than a one-for-one. One. Well, very rarely more than a one-for-one. One. Could be. Could be if they have two. Could very well be. You do. One of my least favorite things about Mind Crush is that your opponent can chain Twin Twister and discard the card. And that's really sad. I, I don't think we've ever seen that move in the feature match. Not a single time. I've seen someone do something similar where someone searched and the other guy activated Mind Crush. Uh, he activated Mind Crush. The second guy chains Twin. Uh, discarding the card, and the other card that was hit was a second Mind Crush, and the guy chained Mind Crush because he knew he was going to discard the one card in his hand left anyway for the first Mind Crush that was already going to miss. Yeah. Blindly called Sky Striker Engage and hit two copies and won the game. <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell. We're learning a couple of new plays it's here. A good trick, weekend. that one. Is chaining twin to Mind Crush. That was this is one of my least favorite things about playing Mind Crush. I'm always afraid to play Mind Crush. I love Mind Crush, but I'm afraid to play it while there's a quick play spell that can discard a card from your opponent's hand. Well, it is it's it, a very popular card. It can be one of those go big or go home cards. Mind so, Crush. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's quite not, good. It's not like that much of a risk most of the time, but yeah. But my problem, you, you get the one for one, and you get to see your opponent's hand. It doesn't yeah. do that much else. All right, let's see. Maybe Guys are drawing into their cards first. for the third and final duel. This is it, the last duel in the Swiss portion of YCS Utrecht. Do we think that's oh, an Magistus evenly feet. matched? I think that is an evenly matched. So the, the fact that uh, Phillips let him go first has surprised him because there's an evenly matched. And well, evenly matched is a card you'd probably put in if you think you're going to go second. Yeah. So Uros got um, two Burning Abyss here and Skarm. He's also got, sorry, Graf. He's choosing not to summon the Majesty's Fiend here, which is, which is fine because it, it means he can play with his Burning Abyss cards a bit better. He's going to choose to end on a Beatrice. And is it going to be Underclock Taker again? I can't read the, the French cards as to see. There's a, there's a new Link 2 monster that just requires two monsters and has got two down diagonal arrows. I don't even know the name of it, to be honest. <laughs> It's just like a normal monster, and it's yeah. got like 1,200 attacks. It's kind of hard to, to look for it. It's kind of hard to look for it if you don't know the name, and it's going to be in French anyway. We'll see if he makes it, though. Yeah. Because if he does have it in his extra deck, it would be better to make something with diagonal arrows, because if you make something with a down arrow, then you're going to be vulnerable. To Again, to the Mech Knights. Yeah. And, and he knows that his opponent is playing Mech Knights. That's, that's a Trickstar Cerberus. That doesn't have any down arrows, so maybe he's going to... He's going for a very different approach here. It is a very different approach. He's going to make Nightmare Mermaid. It's an unconventional approach. It's very unconventional. Is he sided Ibli or is he main decking Ibli? He didn't have to bring Dante back uh, uh, below that monster, did he? Could have I'm intrigued him anyway. as to why he chose to make the Nightmare Mermaid as opposed to 
Underclock Taker. Maybe he wants to keep the Underclock Taker in his extra deck for later. But yeah, this is a little bit dangerous <laughs> to a copy of, well, <laughs> to some Mech Knights. You're just giving your opponent the free chance to summon some Mech Knights. I mean, Purple Nightfall is dealt with beautifully by the Ghost Ogre in his hand. Oh, so maybe he was like tricking his opponent into making the Wind Up play. Rabbit. So, Wind Up Rabbit. I remember the card, yeah. So if you look at Purple Nightfall, it's like Wind Up Rabbit, but you special summon it for free, search your card when it banishes itself, and has 1,100 more attack. It's like Wind Up Rabbit gone completely insane. It's like Wind Up Rabbit and Wind Up Factory in uh, one. Okay, I, th I thought you were going to say somebody was really winding up that rabbit. They have. They've turned him into a giant mech knight. It's like a Duracell battery commercial. So yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> it's going forever and ever. The ogre has answered the purple nightfall, but there is, a, I think, the silver what's the second bit of it. Sorry, blue sky. Blue That's sky, his yeah. name. Why do I keep forgetting? Blue it's not sky. silver sky. It's a blue sky. It's blue sky. There's indigo eclipse, who's the the zone shifter, and yellow star is the one that destroys spell and traps. I didn't know this until recently, but yellow star is not actually once per turn. Oh. So, but it only destroys spells and traps in its own column. So what you can do is summon it in a column, destroy, destroy a spell or trap, and then shift its shift. column yeah. okay. using the shifty guy. <laughs> shift, that's, that's his, that was definitely his card during playtesting. Yeah. Somebody was like, okay, we call this and guy. And then destroy shifty another guy. spell or trap. And someone did that to me once, and I was just, I was just blown away. <laughs> yeah, talking about blowing somebody away, looking at Philipp Wollstorfer here. He's also, again, unleashing a flurry of special summons. Just what Trickstar and you, Mech Knight yeah, wants to do. Yeah, it's nice. You see all these special summons. I don't know what they do with them. <laughs> but we will see. He will do something. Maybe a Nightmare Unicorn work quite well. So traditionally, Beatrice has been one of these really cut, very irritating cards that's very <laughs> difficult to get rid of effectively because if you destroy it by battle or card effect, then it summons uh, Big Dante. Dante so, the something of the Burning Abyss. Traveller. No, no. That's oh, oh, sorry, Dante. you mean Big Dante. Big Dante. Pilgrim. Pilgrim. Yeah. The two eight dude that can't it's be not just traveling, he's pilgrimage. Yeah. If that's he's the done word. his traveling. Alright, so um But you have Nightmare Unicorn now, which is an extra deck monster that almost anyone can play and will just send it back to the extra deck. So what about Uros's opening? He didn't go with the Majesty's Fiend. Would you agree to that? I think so, because the Majesty's Fiend we see here would have just got run over by the Purple Nightfall. Uh, and it would have, it's a lot of resources because you just have to lose the Burning Abyss monster that you used in the first instance. Oh, <laughs> this is the new Mech Knight Link monster. I think you can discard a card to search a world legacy spell or trap from your deck. Here you go, guys. Mech Knight of the Morning Star. It has to be made with uh, at least one Mech Knight. Yeah, that is correct. And you can discard one Mech Knight monster or one World Legacy card, which is not going to happen here. And you add one World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. So there are some nice World Legacy spells and traps. So does there's he? Oh, he does play yeah, Succession so and Memory. World Legacy Succession and World Legacy's Memory. So one of which special summons... Oh, and Secret. Uh, ...from your graveyard, and the other one special summons a Mech Knight from your deck, but it has more restrictions. So World Legacy's... Succession special summons any monster from your graveyard to a zone that a link monster points to. So it's like Monster Reborn, but you just have to have a link monster. Right. He can't do that. Shall we tell the judge? He's not. He's already summoned um, Purple Nightfall this turn. Yeah, I'm gonna pass it on. And the judge is even before I was able to um, finish typing that up. Thomas was already moving, maybe because he's got Luke or Matt in his ear, I don't know. Or they just, themselves, they were like, wait a second. I mean, I might be wrong. That would be really bad if I was. But I'm pretty sure that you can only summon the Mech Knights once per turn. Uh, you can only special summon Mech Knight Purple Nightfall once per turn this way. Yeah, so he's already summoned it mm -hmm. using that effect. Because that was the first thing he did, was he summoned it and then tried to use its effect and it's it got a bit hit weird by because, Ogre. I mean... I think it's probably just because it happened at the beginning of the turn that he forgot. Right. Um, but but that was the first thing he did, is he summoned a Purple Nightfall yeah. and then used it. Sometimes effect. the turns take forever. It's easy to forget what he did at the start of the turn. Yeah. Like one turn taking 10 minutes. I mean, it's not going to stop him from being I, able to, you know, play some decent cards. I think if he'd 
remembered that's what was going to happen, then he might have chosen to discard the Purple Nightfall instead and then be able to summon the Indigo Eclipse from his hand and then use the Legacy Succession to revive the Purple Nightfall. Yeah, so now he has to play very differently. So he can still make the Nightmare Unicorn, as we suggested. It's the sort of everyone's favorite new out to Beatrice because it shuffles it into the extra deck, so that does not trigger its effect. So the sad part is that your opponent does get to use it again, though, this game, because there is only one copy in the extra deck. So Philip's got the decision now as to whether he actually wants to kill the Nightmare Mermaid. And he has chosen to. Fun fact about Burning Abyss monsters is they destroy themselves. If you have a monster that's not a Burning Abyss monster. So it's often a, you have to make a decision as to whether you do actually want to kill something which is a non-Burning Abyss. Most of the time, your opponent has a monster, you attack it, right? You do. But against Burning Abyss, you might decide to play it. Be a bit like a messenger of peace, basically. Yeah. Be a bit more non-aggressive. An interesting decision to just shotgun the reincarnation. But he knew he had a Seer in his hand, and Seer is one of the best Burning Abyss monsters. And now it's banished forever. Yeah. So that seems fair enough. Right. It's a bit of a weird card, Reincarnation against Trickstar, because you don't see them searching anything that you're scared of. They don't search things very fast. I, Trickstar Reincarnation is not a card that many people just like to sort of activate, because no. just your opponent had a hand, now they have a different one. Yeah. And you don't you didn't know what the hand was in the first place. So. Yeah, usually you have some idea of what he's holding, because of like past um, decisions he made or search effects and things like that. But in this and case, it's perfectly reasonable yeah. to want to get rid of the Seer because now he, there's no way that Seer is going to be used again this game. It's a very smart decision. Burning Abyss, as far as I can tell, unless he's running Levier in his extra deck. Old school. That used to be a really good card, Levier, the mm -hmm. Sea Dragon. It used to be, yeah. Special summon the Seer, the Seer would kill itself, bring back the Dante, it'd be beautiful. Levier is still good if you play it right, is what somebody says on the chat. I like Levier. I think it's very cool with the new uh, Light Swans, Lumina, Light Swan, something, Twilight Swan, something or other. I can't remember the full name of the Twilight Swan. Maybe it's Lumina Twilight Swan somehow. Yeah, they, most of them are the just basically Light being Swan. reprinted with different names. <laughs> And slightly different effects. So that makes them a new card. And I was going to say, yeah. Technically speaking, that in makes. What, them how, in what sense it is the same card if it has a new name and a but, different effect? But the card design department was like, let's just reuse an old name. That's cooler. Now I think there's a storytelling <laughs> background there. Like, yeah, this Lumina has now shifted to the Twilight, and that's why it's a different card. So does he have another out to Beatrice here? Uh, he can't make Beatrice. Oh no! Not, not, is it not yet, or he can't? Uh, he can make it at some point, but he doesn't have a Burning Abyss monster in his hand. I'm going to be honest, if I was Uros, I probably would have used the Gallus to make the Dante, and then used the Burning Abyss monster. I think it was... Uh, I should know its name. It's the one that special summons from the hand. It's not Scar. No. no. It's the one that special summons another level 3 or lower fiend from your hand. Or level 3 fiend, maybe. But if he kept that in his hand, because it's a Burning Abyss monster, he then could have upgraded it into Beatrice which may have left him in a better position than having the Gallus in his hand and a Dante on the field, just a Beatrice on the field. Beach their own. I mean, generally speaking, the Gallus is better than having a Burning Abyss in your hand, but for the case that you can discard the Burning Abyss to make a Beatrice. So now he's got Baba, almost... Libic, that's the one almost preparing for timeout here, even though we have 11 more minutes to go. Uh, well, you've always got to be prepared, especially when you play Trickstar. And this time around... This time around, he is now allowed to summon that purple Nightfall that's yeah, in his hand. That is, of course, fine. But uh, what I was about to say is um, that the Trickstar deck here is running a bit out of gas. It's not like before, where he could just, he, like, he had bam, a lot bam, of options, bam. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's a little bit down on options. Yeah, I don't think they sort of... They, they have all these monsters, these big monsters. I don't think they very efficiently get converted into Link monsters. Yeah. So decks like Goki or something, their monsters replace themselves when you link them away. But the Mech Knights don't do that. They search themselves when you summon, but then once you've used them all, they're gone. Mm. You don't get any more. 
So this, I don't know if this feels good for Philip because he's activated Purple Nightfall and then it's just been negated by Ash, but now it just stays on the field. So he can either use it again next turn or he can just keep it. Uh, for, he can use it for a Link Summon. Whatever floats his boat. Whatever floats his boat, yeah. All right, yet another card search. And uh, Philip Wolstoffer with the reincarnation now. A couple of cards on the field, but nothing really threatening here. Uh, what's in his extra deck? If he has any way to kill the Dante, I expect he can attack the game this turn. Uh, and he's going to be able to... He's got another search. He's got another search, so he'll be able to get the Lily Bell, unless that's already been used. There's still 6-8 to go. Is it that much damage? Uh, well, I just need to think what's in it, what the best way to kill the... The, the Dante is. is. But yeah, so I think Lily Bell's in his graveyard, so he can return that to the field with the Trickstar Reincarnation in his graveyard. He's just checking his... Ah, extra. no, he can't use Akashic Magician. That would be cool, though. <laughs> I don't see that card enough. It's quite cool. Such a pity. Uh, but it would have to be directly under the Dante to be useful. So re re reincarnation, reincarnation can bring back Lily Bell, which can then be bounced for Licorice, and then Lily Bell will summon itself. So then he'll have four monsters on the field, and then we have to look at his extra deck and see what's cool with four monsters. Four monsters should be getting you somewhere. <laughs> it normally should. Mm, but in <laughs> this case... Nothing pops out here. Nothing pops out to deal effective... If there was some... So if he hadn't used Nightmare Unicorn, then we would be very happy. But in this case, is he just attacking? He is just attacking, you know? So he's just attacking. I mean, the Lily Bell can attack directly, so... It's not that bad, but mm. no, it would be nice to have well, cleared the Dante. Well, we never said it's bad, it's just surprising this that was something that happened in Burning Abyss a lot. five monsters and you cannot finish the game, basically. Indeed, yeah. That's not what you usually see. Burning Abyss, you know, used to have this Dante, and then burning the Burning Abyss deck itself wasn't very good at killing a Dante, because it has 2,500 <laughs> yeah. defense points, yeah. <laughs> and that was too many. So you used to get in these situations a lot where you got kind of stuck. All right, um, so 4-8 left for Uros Pavlovich. Should be happy that he's going to see another turn here with, with his opponent summoning five monsters to the field but not being able to clear the board. I mean, he is going to take board. a lot of damage, and he just took a, a 2,000 from the Lily Bell swings. Uh, there is the Holy Angel and the two Licorices uh, to do I some burn damage. Consider me underwhelmed, to be honest. I'm a bit underwhelmed. This is one of the things that people complained about Trickstar, which is that you can have all this stuff and then it doesn't really do anything. And before something like Nightmare Unicorn even, Here's another there was just no answer. There was no good answer to something like a 2500 defense monster. <laughs> so Trickstar Reincarnation for three cards in hand. Is that three? Yeah. So that's another... Some, somehow another one card has been missing the whole time. Amount of damage. On our app. There was definitely a Barbar and a Gallus. Yeah. And the card that he just drew. And then... Yes, so, so that is three. That does make three. So he drew into three monsters, if I'm not mistaken. And um, of course, uh, the damage triggers here. So yeah, it does do quite a bit of damage. So there was 800 when he drew uh, he the initial the card. In Blanche. This is an interesting situation where it doesn't normally happen, but it looks like Uros might just get sort of burned to death. Although that is what the Trickstar deck is supposed to do. It is what do. the Trickstar deck is supposed to do from a sort of card design point of view, but it's not normally a common strategy. It just doesn't do it at all. Just to sort of say, come at me, you're going to take a little bit of damage every time you do something. Um, so the clock is ticking down, Baba is gone. The also ticking down. But um, Trickstar is still very much in the burn range here. And getting ever closer. Well, he's got that reincarnation in the graveyard and the Lily Bell in the graveyard. So, more shenanigans. Whatever Uros does, he has to be able to deal with that coming down next turn. Because if that comes down next turn, then the Lily Bell will attack for a thousand, add back a Licorice, bounce itself for a Licorice, and then summon itself again and attack for another thousand. And then there'll be a Licorice on the field, and he's only on 2,400 at the moment. So that would be game over. Mm. So he's got to. He's got a Rhino Warrior. He's got to snow. not only answer the board. He's also got to be able to deal with that threat coming out, which may be too much for the Burning Abyss deck at the moment. But now he's just reading it's just double Trickstar checking Holy Angel. Text, yeah. So I think he's maybe confused about the effect which gains attack. So I think it gains attack every time a Trickstar monster inflicts damage to your opponent. And there have been four instances where that have happened this turn. 
but there are two sixes on it for some reason. I think it should have gained Equal to the damage they, it, they took. Oh, it's equal to the damage. Okay, that's yeah. why. Sure. So but only right. for the Trickstar Monsters. Yeah, so the Trickstar Monsters have done 800 each, or maybe 600 each. No, 600 each. That's why there's six and six counters on it. I disagree. I think they've done 800. Uh, but th that's the light stage doing the tr additional 200. Yeah, but they did 200 each when he drew. And then he activated Reincarnation Banishing 3 for another 600 each, which oh. is 800 each. Mm. I mean, I don't think he's going to attack over the Holy Angel anyway this turn. So I don't think it's going to matter all that much. Yeah. But I think it's 800 each. If he cannot attack over it, how is he going to get rid of it? Uh, Nightmare Unicorn, perhaps? Oh, Snow, snow Cut could help. Uh, well, but it cannot turn it into defense, of course. I don't know why he didn't use Snow on a Licorice. So that would prevent him from taking further damage. Is it that he just went in his head to the next step already? He didn't maybe, think of Maybe targets? he's decided that he, he's going to be able to attack for game this turn. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't wouldn't use Snow on Licorice because that's just 400 damage that he wouldn't have taken. Yeah. Right now. Or he could have used Snow on the Mech Knight Purple Nightfall to it's very make hard it to run disagree. away now. <laughs> but he brought back the All Star, the <laughs> biggest guy that everybody loves in the chat, Far Far Mother Branch of the Burning Abyss. I don't know where he's planning to go from here because all he's now got. He's used his normal summon, so the Fiendish Rhino Warrior is not going to hit the field. And now they're running out of ways to indicate how much <laughs> attack <laughs> they, they the Holy eyes. Angel has got. <laughs> Can they not just agree that he's not going to attack it this turn? <laughs> It's a, it's a very interesting way of trying to resolve that situation. Let's just all agree it's not going to attack. Okay. It's not going to get attacked. It's either going to get destroyed by a card effect. Maybe or it's going to get Ring of Destruction. Ring of Destruction, yeah. And then there aren't any Ring of Destructions on either of the players' deck lists. Uh, maybe they have a special card that gives you a card from your collection. That would be fun. Yeah. So Snow is making a comeback. It is. It's the only comeback it's going to make, or is there enough cards for a second one? Uh, I don't know. I think around five were left in the graveyard. Uh, so now he's using... Maybe he didn't know that you can use Snow's effect when you normal summon it. I don't know. Yeah. But you can. It's all speculation at this point. When You, you can speculate what a player is going to do. When you speculate why they didn't do something, it's quite <laughs> difficult. Yeah, you, you would have to have a look inside You'd their brain. have to brain. get inside their Pick brain. Pick their brains, yeah. I mean, if they just forgot, then I don't know how you'd find that in their brain. I'm pretty sure you can use snow when you normal summon it. I don't know how that works exactly. What do you think? Do you think you can use snow when you normal summon it if you had to bet? If I had to bet, I would look it up and say yes, you can. Yes. There you go. It's, it's very easy to win these kinds of bets. Oh no. Gallus whiffed. Also, I have a professional fortune teller. That's very sad when right Gallus whiffs. So Uros is just going through the motions here, just summoning monster uh, no, I think after he's monster. Oh no! Okay, he's not conceding. I think he was showing his opponent his plan was to make Boral load, and but he couldn't make Boral load yeah. because the Gallus whiffed. So I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure so how again, he's planning to get out of this with the tools that he has available to him. Yeah, he's definitely getting the most use out of snow that we've seen in a very long time. Last time I've seen that much snow action was in YCS Prague, if I'm not mistaken. So one card that might be helpful here is Topologic Bomber Dragon, but I'm not sure he has it in his extra deck. So Topologic Bomber Dragon, very powerful extra deck monster. Mm -hmm. uh, what's he going to try and make here, though? Oh. He can't make Borrow Load Dragon. Yeah, and his opponent knows <laughs> His opponent's like, no! <laughs> Put that away. Try again. So Borrow Load Dragon requires at least three materials. This is very good for Philip that he knows the rules when they are playing in his favor. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very smart strategy. He <laughs> had time to prepare because so Uros kind of revealed the Borrow Load Dragon from his like, extra deck. Wait, what? That's how my Nightfall works? But, oh, this is how your Borrow Load works. So I know in that a situation card. like this, I don't know if Philip can tell his opponent that he must perform a legal Link Summon now because he's already tried to put them in the graveyard. Yeah, very likely. I'm not sure entirely on the rules in that situation, um, but we do have judges around as yeah. to whether you can say, I tried, you know, the, the entire thing I tried to do was summon Borrow Load and I wasn't allowed to do that. Yeah, then you basically... Then you say, I would just return the yeah, game to our Just return before. to the... Or as to whether you say the first thing you do is declare I'm going to Link Summon. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, you always have 
a so target. You, you know, it's not exact. Target is not the right word. But, but yeah, you have an idea. Yeah. It's like it's like one thing, one motion, and if uh, it's not possible, you just return everything to the thing it w to so the way what, it was. What if someone puts a couple of monsters in their graveyard and thinks for a minute and then takes them out again? Why would you do that? Well, if you think you think you're going to do a link summon and then oh, okay. you decide you're not going to link summon. Yeah. So why wouldn't you not bring them back? Well, then if you just brought them back to say you decided you weren't going like, to link summon. That depends a lot on whether the player is like holding onto the card still. Like if if, so if they put them in the graveyard, you can say and they must then they stay remove in the their hand from the graveyard. Yeah, yeah. And then they should really be doing something, as in link summon two. Sure. But what if they said, my, what if they then say, okay, I'm going to try and link summon this card, I can't link summon? Yeah, then you just go back to then the Then you last go back to the monsters on the field. Legal stage, yeah. So what you do in that situation to get out of it, if you're the player, is stop, you say, I'm going to try talking. and summon this wrong stop card, talking, so then I get right. to put them back. <laughs> my God. Yeah, this is this is what we need in the coverage. <laughs> <laughs> Professional advice how to get around judge calls. <laughs> no, but I, I'm fairly certain that Uros just received a warning by the judge for... Whatever the correct term is, it's basically like an illegal activation. It's just not illegal link summon. Summon attempt. It'd be a bit mean to give Urus a warning. When it's it's when actually Philip called procedural error. Philip made a very similar procedural error as well. So he's been he's been in this turn for something like eight minutes now, and I don't I don't really see a way out of this for him. Yeah, if I'm going to be totally been, he's honest. He's been looking at all the different ways to look. I think Philip has game next turn anyway. And I think Uras, even if he didn't have game next turn, is down on life points and isn't going to be able to do enough damage. But we'll see if he can come up with anything crazy. There is not a topologic bomber dragon in his extra deck for him, unfortunately, which would be a way of doing damage. Yeah. But he only does, it tends to do 3,000. Um, and there is more than 3,000 difference in the life points. So there might be some card that's in French that I don't know what it is that's in his extra deck that's going to come out now and save him. Yeah, I mean, but that would be Phil quite Philip is definitely waiting for what's going to happen here. I suppose he doesn't mind. Are they are they discussing with the judges whether he should get a, a procedural error warning? No, no, it's not. It's not procedural error. It's just like, like I said, his turn has been taking eight minutes now at this point, and it doesn't seem like he's going anywhere. Like if a player knows where he's going and he's like going through the motions really quickly, that is fine. If he summons a monster, thinks about what to do next, does something things about what to do next and it just keeps going on like this that is considered slow play that doesn't mean that you're playing slow on purpose no i mean in this case there's clearly no benefit to playing slowly when you're five thousand yeah. life points exactly. behind exactly it, it shouldn't be in his interest unless he's got a I super think secret game plan that we don't know where about. you don't really know what to do because you're in a situation where it's very difficult to yeah. get out of so you're just but thinking you, through all the possible options. Exactly, but you don't. You're not allowed to think through all the possible <laughs> options forever. No, because you're definitely not. Because I that's agree. called an unfair advantage. Because nobody else in the room has infinite time to think about everything. That's that's called playtesting, and it's not <laughs> happening at a tournament. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here we go. We like he's eventually made it to the battle phase. Thrown in the towel, I think there, because he knows he's got to know that the um, the reincarnation in the graveyard is waiting there to bring back. The Lily Bell. And, and actually, the, the judge has just informed us that he has been warned. Um, so he did receive a warning for slow play, but um, yeah, now, now where is he going here? Uh, so he's, he, I think he's just putting the snow in the graveyard to prevent the attack of the Lily Bell next turn. Right. And Philip doesn't seem to be very impressed here. Philip is like, yeah, just keep going, just keep going. So far, nothing is threatening my incoming victory here. Uh, well, he has now got the snow in the graveyard. The okay. snow in the graveyard yeah, will point, present yeah. the, prevent the attack of Lily Bell, but there's no way he's going to like reclaim the board. Yeah, because I mean it's an old-fashioned way of looking at things, but Holy Angel does have more attack. But look at Philip's face; he's like he's just looking at all of that, and he's still like, "Yeah, okay." What are you going to do? <laughs> just, yeah. just keep going. I don't mind. Uh, he's he's link summoning yet again. With that, that snow has been brought back about five times. Yeah, something like that. Which is interesting because it didn't look like he had that many cards. So as predicted. The yeah. Holy Angel was not attacked. It wasn't. No. So, so Philip had a long, long time to think about this turn. He's immediately going for the reincarnation. Doesn't even think twice about it. Yeah. Um, then changes his mind about it. <laughs> uh, well, the Peck Knight, the yeah. Peck Knight needs Purple to come back. Nightfall needs to come back. Yeah, this is one of those situations where you're like, I you want to go, you want to go, you've been waiting. Yeah, I mean, it's not game on the table because... Oh, he's taking the attack. Maybe he's run out of stuff for Snow. 
Yeah, now he's run out of stuff. He's like on, on I don't know, then, five cards in Graveyard again. I said this before. Then he's but dead, there it is. Yeah. There's the attack. And that is game ending. And that means Philipp Wolstorfer with his Trickster deck gets the win in just one short minute in his turn. <laughs> and uh, that means he's still got a shot to advance to the top 64 if his tiebreakers carry him there. Let's talk about it in the post-match analysis. Oof, that was quite the thriller. That was a long one, yeah. Yeah, it was like the Yu-Gi-Oh version of a very long book uh, that ended with, depending on which side you're on, either happy ending or a bit dramatic, I guess. Um, one of the Germans, we, they, they were the most represented faction here, if you want to call it that, with 800-something players. Nation? Nation is a good word, yeah. It's also the official word. Um, one of the Germans seems to have a good shot at advancing, um, but... Well done to both of them, coming with something that we didn't expect to see as many times at this event, with Trickstar, McKnight as well as Burning Abyss, and still hanging in there until the very last round. Indeed, yeah. So we saw one of BA's sort of signature tricks, which is not actually using any BA cards, <laughs> but it's summon Vanity's Fiend and see if your opponent can oh, yeah, deal that, with it. Oh yeah, that was a that was a quick match actually. That uh, was. Quick, quick I've, round. I've had games like that. I've had games where I've sat. I was I've, my opponents played a Vanity's Fiend, and I've said, mm. "Yeah, I was about to say it didn't sound like you were on the uh, winning end. You were seeing on the receiving end." I've had, like, I think I've had both ends, but okay. I think I've, I've the ones that stuck in your match, mind. I've, I've, I've summoned a Vanity's Fiend on my opponent. Would you, would you say you're a negative person, generally speaking? I don't know, but <laughs> the most recent game I played with a Vanity's Fiend, I was on the receiving end. Okay. So that's the one that stuck the most with you. Well, yeah. One time I had an impermanence and I won, and the other time I did not have an impermanence and I lost. Okay. So, guys, here's what's happening next. We had more than 2,350 players going into this event, played nine rounds of Swiss yesterday, cut the field down, something like 350 yeah, going into today's event with just three more rounds of Swiss, and the last of these three rounds just ended, round number 12 which means we're now going to perform a second cut in the tournament and then only the top 64 players are still remaining in the field and they have a shot at becoming the winner of the 200th YCS. Um, one of them might be Philipp Wolstorff with his Trickstar deck. There are a couple of other guys had some super interesting matches in the top. We saw some high-profile players in the top. Going to talk about that a little bit more once we start the top 64. So with that, we're signing off for a very short break and take you to Luke and Matt. Thank you very much, Oli. What a match. Yeah, that was uh, really good. It was one of the few ones we've had on the stream so far that's gone quite close to time. But yeah. We didn't quite get there. Yeah. Um, yeah, Burning Abyss just not being able to get there. The big Mech Knights just yeah. being a little bit too much to handle. Yeah, exactly. The Mech Knights can just get over that kind of primary yeah. defensive well, you, wall. You, like, your ideal turn one setup is like the underclo uh, underclock taker with the Beatrice, and yeah. that's just perfect for Mech Knight Blue to just slide in there and yeah. add a bunch of cards and then the start was pretty explosive from Philip anyway when he had the um, double licorice and yeah, yeah. It, just, uh, it just went downhill there for Uros. Yeah, it's one of those things where you know, Burning Abyss have been sticking around we, we do have a couple of Burning Abyss players but unfortunately in this particular match they didn't do so well Yes, uh, you have been working on your stat tour as well, right? You've been working on a formula to figure out who's going to win the tournament before it ends. Yeah, so I've been trying to I've been trying to work that one out. Um, I got a few candidates at the minute, but I realised that I'm there's a bunch more data that I need to look at to really make uh, to really make a good prediction. But at the moment, um, it's a, a player that we we have had on the live stream previously, uh, Jonas Koschel, who's playing uh, Sky Striker Pure right now. And that's purely because of, well, not purely because of, but it's he is at the top of the field and he's playing a really good deck. Right. So he's playing the Sky Striker Pure, which have, has the best win rate. Um, interestingly, if, for example, if somebody was playing um, just some complete rogue deck that has a Yo really... you Yo send you. Be they, that guy. Yeah, and you know they, they have a really bad win rate because there's a lot of other people playing that that aren't doing so well then they wouldn't appear in my list. So it kind of, it's able to work that out at least based on your, your win rate in the tournament and the win rate of the deck. Yeah, your deck advantage. But yeah. as you were saying before we came on, I think you wanted to add in what the player's potential matchups could be on a bracket fixture to yeah. really accurately predict and say, this yeah, guy exactly. has the best run. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to try and uh, have that at some point. Well, yeah. That would be super cool. Um, we can take a look at the... Uh, the actual win rates of the decks. They've not shifted around too much. Um, two and three have sw switched, though. So Goki is currently sat at second. Sky Striker Pure is always at the top. Has There's way too many of them not for it to not be there. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, well, you say that, but because there's enough of uh, enough of them to, you know, th- there, there might be a lot of them, but they're not not necessarily the best players in the room playing them all. All of those decks, sure. but it does. It do, you are right. It does kind of show that that deck is better, even if those just by sheer representation, it. yeah. uh, it's going to be successful. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but then, yeah, followed very quickly by Goki at 61%, per- uh, yeah, 61%, um, with only, like, a fifth of the matches that were played by Sky Striker yeah, Pure. been massively underrated. I think a lot of yeah. people, as we were talking to Luke earlier, said he didn't have time to practice the new Goki combos, yeah. and that's why he just decided not to do it. Yeah, but he did hands like hands down say it's the best deck. Attention he just didn't have the time to, to practice for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to have a bit of a longer break uh, because we're shifting from the Swiss portion of the round to uh, to top cut. Um, we might be able to get some players to be interviewed between those two portions. Currently, we can see everyone running towards the standings. So while they're doing that, we'll prepare for the next set of feature matches here in the top cut. Top and, uh, 64. Yeah, that's going to be it. So we'll be right back with our top cut. See you guys soon.